Hello everyone, welcome to what's going to be the first real episode of the Full Power Frieza Toy Build series, where I basically take the thing from an initial 3D sculpt, which you're seeing me working on right now, to hopefully a successful set of prints and then assembly in order to have something for my own personal collection here, that I literally built from scratch for the most part. To give a really brief summary of what I'm going to be doing for the brunt of this video, most of what you're going to see here is kind of roughing in the various shapes and then detailing them as I have them on the right size, and that's done by not by doing it as one big coherent sculpt that I have to cut up later, but rather making a bunch of the individual pieces, or sub-tools is what this program prefers to call them as, and I'm using a combination of the move brush to really rough in the shape to get the right silhouette, and then once I have that in place, then kind of upping the mesh count and using a lot of uh, a handful of brushes, but just really uh, carefully in order to really get the details in there or inflate things as I need, which kind of give you the brushes I tend to most use in this program right now, at least for this early sculpting stuff. Uh, the standard brush for kind of etching in some details or if the DAM or DAM standard if I need to get something really etched in to a fine point. If I need to make things a little bit bigger but in a kind of a rounded shape, I usually use something like the inflate tool. Or if I need to really move a lot of stuff, the move tool once again in order to help really reshape things. And if I need to kind of clear up some things like some of the uh, indents, I usually end up using something like the pinch tool in order to fix that up. Now the big shift you're about to see in the overall resolution of the neck bit there is because under the geometry section there you saw me use a few divides, I think two or three, to up the overall resolution of the bit and then you saw me use the dynamish feature in order to kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, clean up the topology of the overall thing, clean up the surface, so then I could start working in more detail. Now from there you see me using a bit of the pinch tool in order to kind of really fix up the indents and pull things together for a more clean surface, as well as I believe a little bit of the, uh, not the H polish tool, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, what's the word, ah, the trim dynamic, yeah, the trim dynamic tool to basically flatten up the surface, which I didn't want to use in the main neck too much, but I did want to use on top of the thing in order to flatten it out for when I need to eventually work out the neck peg to insert on there later. Now you're going to see me kind of messing around with a cylinder shape in order to get the hips here and it's worth noting at this time this was not the right shape for the job. If I wanted to do this a lot more efficiently in the future I should have used the polysphere which I will probably try to do if I do this process again because it would have been easier to kind of dig things in there as opposed to what I'm doing with the cylinder here where I basically have to pull things in then use the inflate tool in order to kind of muck around with the topology to get it loosely filling in the gap in the center there and then a lot more of the move tool very carefully trying to nudge things into its general shape. I mean, I do get the job done, but it was not the easiest way. This took longer than it should have in order to get even the crude shape in the place. Uh, while you see me do, continue doing that, it's worth noting that uh, you're going to see me do a program change a little bit through here, and that's because, as you might notice, I'm not pulling out any of the stuff in the center. I'm not hauling out this piece. I only learned a little bit later after purchasing the ZBrush Core here that one of the features I needed, which was basically to really dig in and kind of pull out the center bit, isn't actually possible in this version. To help really explain that, you need to understand that ZBrush comes in three different flavors. There's ZBrush Core Free, which is the free version of the program you can just download off of Pixelogic's site, which is a very, very bare bones version of it, just good for some basic sculpting, but it's good for a learning process. There's ZBrush Core here, which, while it's not the full-fledged program, and is missing quite a few features and it just has a lot of limitations still, it's still not the thousand dollar version of the program, thousand dollar USD to be exact. So if you want to really experiment, it's like, I want to try the program but I don't want to dip the whole way in, that's what my original thinking process was for this particular whole sculpt thing. Unfortunately, knowing what I needed to know after the fact, uh, I end up buying the whole full-fledged program through the upgrade process. What I didn't read when I originally did that is that the upgrade process only takes uh, or only gives you credit for $100 worth of the original purchase, which is I believe at least $200 USD, meaning I overpaid by at least 100 USD in order to upgrade to the ZBrush Full, which you'll be seeing me use in the later part of this video. So yeah, not my brightest moment there. Now the next little bit of footage is, it's frankly painful for me to watch after the fact, but uh, I'm leaving this in here so you can also see uh, when things don't go right and what not to do really. And that's with me starting the leg construction, namely the upper thighs here. 
generally I get a little ahead of myself and end up causing myself quite a bit of headache that I need to undo later after the fact. Now as you can see, things are starting promising enough. I use a cylinder in order to work on the general leg shape just because the tube shape does fit well for what that particular part of the figure will be needing. And I even use the move shape in order, or move brush in order to start bulking the shape. But very shortly on you can see, uh, what I'm doing here is not making much sense. I'm really trying to finesse and work out some of the overall kind of a muscular topology in advance, even though the thing is much lower resolution than it should be in order to pull it off, and it's just really messing up with the overall topology and shape of the 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 general leg part there. Even when I shortly go around to try to fix things up later by using some divisions, and then I believe a little bit of a dynamic mesh in order to fix things up, there's going to be a lot of cleanup work involved because I'm trying to force things in there when the the part was not ready for it yet. So, yep, here's the divide, here's the uh, dynamite, not dynamite yet, but if it's going to be there very shortly. And you can see me making the mistake of using uh, the various things I try to think I use the inflate tool to try to work out the muscle bulk at this point after, oh, wait, no, first a little bit of the uh, definition of where the shape should be, and then I use the inflate tool to try to fix it in there and uh, suffice to say, I actually have to go with the smooth tool in order to remove all of this later down the line. Yeah. Not so great. Not my best work. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is actually the last bit of footage where I'm doing stuff still in ZBrush Core, and that's because once I learned exactly how the live boolean feature worked, I realized that this was about the limit of how I could take this in the light version of the program, and that I needed to go and plunk down the rest of the money to get the full version. Now, unfortunately, I lost a bit of footage between here and the next bit as we made the jump to ZBrush full, so I'll have to explain kind of what happened between then and now. Uh, as you can see, first off, we have a head. This head is brand new to the sculpt, so uh, basically, while it's based on the same general shape as the original figure, the expression itself is brand new and based off a bit of art which I'll be putting on screen in a moment or so. And also, it was what I use for reference for a lot of the extra veininess and scratchiness that will be appearing on Freeze's overall body. So uh, this also helps keep things in general scale for when I print things out in the future because I know roughly how big this is supposed to be compared to the original toy. Now the other big thing with the live booling feature now being available to me is that I managed to hollow out the upper torso, which is actually a very big thing. Because that means if I could do this here and thus fit in the proper articulation, that means I can now go and do the same for the other bits like the legs and the arms. Which, as you can see here, I did manage to clean the overall surface topology for, except there are little bits here and there that still have little random holes I need to fix. So in order to do that, I, I'm going to end up doing what I did with the legs here at the bottom, or the shins, where I basically inject another bit of a uh, shape in there, and then merge them together to remove the holes, so I can make some clean cuts later. Mind you, to make those cuts, I'm going to need some 3D models of some joints. Unfortunately, I don't think JP Toys ever put out his version of the joints out, so... I guess that's going to be our next little bit of the project, so join us next time as we finish making the rest of the arms and figure out how to make some joints on ZBrush, I guess.